everyone, my name is Abuna Isaac Bear from Barry Science Lab, and welcome back to Probability. Today, we're going to be talking about the Poisson distribution. Let's say it's expected that one asteroid hits Earth every one million years. Then, what's the chance that another asteroid is about to hit us in the 101 million years since the last asteroid hit? That's what the Poisson distribution is for. So, what does the Poisson distribution tell us? Well, as you'll come to see, it's useful in cases with two specific assumptions. One, the chance of two events happening in a very short time period is negligible. For example, the chance that you have Earth and an asteroid hits it one year, and then the next month, another asteroid comes and hits, is negligible. And number two, the events are independent. Of course, one asteroid's orbit barely ever influences another asteroid's orbit. Their gravitational force is so small that they might not even know each other exists. So, of course, there are counterexamples to each of these cases. Like, for example, uh, this model doesn't work with a number of events that happen relatively frequently, or in large pulses. Like, for example, astronomical signals. And this doesn't work for events that are not independent. And, I mean, there's a whole host of uh, events that work like that. So, let's say these two both hold for the event we want to observe. Then what does the Poisson distribution tell us? Well, let's say you take an interval of time. Let's call it T. And over that time T, an event E is expected to happen a few times. Let's say the expected value of an event, actually I have to pick a symbol other than E. Let's call it O. The expected value of the number of times O will happen is, let's call it lambda. Now, I want you to tell me what's the probability of it occurring n times. Of course, it being the expected value being lambda doesn't mean that it's always going to be lambda or something close to it. It means that sure, the averages of the results are going to gravitate towards lambda, but lambda might not even be the most likely option. In fact, it might not even be a possible option. But that's not what we're here to study today. The Poisson distribution is a way to tell you what the probability of n events happening when the expected value is a lambda. So, how can you calculate that? First, let's say that those n events happen like this, in these small blips. This is the key about it not working for events that happen within relatively small time periods of each other. Now, I am going to take this interval of time and slice it up into very small pieces. And including the pieces that don't have an event occurring within them. So in this case, n is actually equal to 4. And these pieces are such that at most, well, they're all of equal length, and at most, one event is occurring within them. Now, let's say I've cut it up so finely that there are now, I can't use n, that there are now p pieces. No, p is good for probability. 
K pieces. So, now we're going to assume that the probability of you picking any one of these boxes and it containing an occurrence of the event is going to be lambda over k. Pretty reasonable, right? So, this is going to be the basic probability of you picking a box and it yields... Oh, holy crap, I'm already forgetting the formula that we took. So this is the basic probability of you picking a box and it leading to a box with an event. Okay, so now you need to know what's the probability of this occurring n times. So specifically, I want to pick every single box so that this probability of one of these boxes having an event occurs n times and the probability it doesn't have an event occurs all those other n times. Well, how many ways can that happen? This probability has to occur n times. This probability has to occur, well, wait, hold up. K, wait, uh, k minus n times. So you want to take the limit as you know, k approaches infinity. And lastly, you have to recognize that this is not just the basic probability. Just like the probability of getting heads, heads, tails, or two heads and one tail isn't just one half, one half, times one half. There are many different ways you can get a head, a head, and a tail. Well, in this case, there are actually only three. But when calculating the chance that you just get a specific number of results, you also, if you're considering co combinations instead of permutations, like we talked about in the first lecture, you now have to consider how many ways there can be n boxes with results. Now, how many ways is that? Well, there are in total k boxes, and you have to choose n of them. So, this is the result you get. But how do we simplify this down? Because limits don't always work nicely. Well, here's the first thing you might notice. This looks awfully similar to the limit as k approaches infinity of 1 minus lambda over k to the k, which is just e to the minus lambda. So, we are going to take this, split it up into this and this and the limit as k approaches infinity of that is just going to be e to the minus lambda. That's the first part of the distribution finished. Now, what do we do with the rest? Well, here we need to consider what happens when k approaches infinity. That's obvious, actually. So, we are first going to expand this out. This is going to be k factorial over n factorial k minus n factorial. n, at some point, is going to have to be, uh, n is fixed, right? We're not looking for the probability that infinitely many events occur. So, n is a fixed number. And at some point, k is going to be much larger than n. Which means that this is going to become what? It's going to become 1 over n factorial times k factorial over k minus n factorial. And this is where the approximation comes in. That is just k times k minus 1 times k minus 2 all the way to k minus n plus 1. And if k is much greater than n, k minus n plus 1 is very close to k. And so are all of those other terms. Which means that there are n terms here. This approximately works like k to the n over n factorial as n approaches infinity. 
sorry, as k approaches infinity. Which means that you can transform this into that. Okay, now we have one final task to deal with. How do we simplify this? Well, I mean, it's relatively simple. You take this, this is lambda over k to the n, you multiply it by, what is this? k minus lambda over k to the minus n, which becomes k over k minus lambda to the n. So when you multiply these two together, you get lambda over k minus lambda to the n. And then you realize that lambda is also a fixed number, which means that slowly this is just going to approach k minus lambda is pretty much going to be equal to k. Which means this is going to approach lambda to the n over k to the n as you approach, as k approaches infinity. Which means you get the limit as k approaches infinity of k to the n, n factorial, lambda to the n, k to the n, e to the minus lambda. These two cancel out, and k is gone. We've evaluated the limit completely. So the Stirling approximation, oh, sorry, what am I talking about? The Poisson distribution is lambda to the n over n factorial e to the n.